Yo, what's going on, everybody? James Jackson here with MachineMasters.com, checking in with another uh, Machine Masters uh, tutorial. Uh, what I'm going to focus on in this tutorial is using Studio One version 3 and showing you how to integrate your iPad applications uh, into your Studio One workflow. Uh, so as uh, the iPad was released and, you know, with the uh, iOS versions that have come out, you know, iOS 6, 7, so on and so forth. We've seen a lot, a lot, a lot more activity in the music making, in the music production market on the iPad in the form of applications. Uh, there's all kinds of applications out there from Animoog uh, to the Alchemy app. Uh, there's the Beat Hawk. Uh, of course, there's iMachine, um, Nanalog, uh, Beatmaker 2, all kinds of applications that have all kinds of sounds in them. Um, what I'm going to show you guys again to do today is to get those sounds from your iPad and sequence your iPad like an external instrument. I'll Almost like you're sequencing, you know, like an external keyboard and show you how to sequence it using MIDI inside Studio One. So first things first, I'm going to go back to the start tab. There is a little bit of setup that you're going to need to do to get this thing going. Uh, first thing you're going to have to do is um, first thing you're going to need, uh, I should say, you're going to need another an external piece of hardware, uh, something that's going to allow you to connect your iPad um, to your computer um, and of course uh, get MIDI data to your iPad um, whether you're using a pad based controller like a machine or a launch pad or using some key some sort of key bed you're gonna need some sort of hardware interface uh, that you can run MIDI from that device to your iPad so you're gonna need to get something like that there's all kinds of things out there there's the iRig MIDI um, I could personally use the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus by iConnectivity um, it's a great little MIDI interface that's good to use with iOS um, but you know your discretion whatever you guys want to use um, the next thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna have to make sure that you're gonna need you're gonna have an audio cable going from the output jack of your i of your iPad, so it's going to be a 3.5 millimeter jack, um, and it's going to have to split either into um, two quarter inch sing, uh, two quarter inch ends or two XLR ends, um, two RCA ends, whatever your iPad takes, you're going to need to get that as well because you're going to hook that into your interface. So in my case, I'm using the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus. Now that interface, that uh, MIDI interface does have audio pass through and will allow me to pass audio directly through it. Um, however, for this, I'm actually just using the 3.5 millimeter jack to two quarter inch cables going into my audio interface. So um, what you're gonna need to do, you're gonna need to configure uh, your MIDI device uh, onto Studio One. So Right here it says configure audio device, but we're gonna click on that anyway. And right here where it says external devices. Now you see I have mine already hooked up, um, but I'll add it again just to you know show you guys how to do it. So if I was to add um, the MIDI interface for your iPad, we're gonna remove this completely. Now I'm gonna click on the add button. We're gonna do new instrument, and you can name this instrument whatever you want. So I named this the iPad. So now from here, we're gonna choose where we're gonna send the MIDI from and where we're gonna send MIDI to. Now at this case, it's going to be your interface that you have uh, that you have gotten for your uh, for your iPad. So me, I'm using the iConnect MIDI. So it's gonna receive MIDI data from the iConnect MIDI input, and it's also gonna send data from the iConnect MIDI out as well. So for the MIDI, I'm just gonna go ahead and select all channels. Uh, send MIDI clocks, uh, use MIDI clock start and send MIDI time code. If you are using these features, if you're doing some advanced MIDI work, uh, by all means, make sure you got those selected, but in this case, we're not gonna need that. So we're gonna click OK. And now you see my iPad, it's listed right here. Apple iPad, you can call the iPad, and it's showing you where you're sending your MIDI to and you where you're receiving your MIDI from. Once you're done there, we're gonna hit OK. Gonna come back into song mode. I'm actually going to delete these two channels. 
So what we're going to do first, uh, I want you to see that I've made here a little uh, drum loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to sync our our iOS device to that. What you need to do now is go to your go to your iPad and on your iPad you're going to select the application you want to use. So I'm going to use the Nanolog application. So as I hit the Nanolog application it's going to open up to my Nanolog app. So what you need to do is you need to set your application up to receive MIDI data. So in this application in particular I'm going to go to open, enable MIDI input, close it out. Now I'm going to go ahead and select a preset here while I'm here. All right, and we're done there. All right, now the next thing you need to do is you need to create a new instrument track. So we're going to hit T to create a new track. Now I'm going to call this iPad Mini, MIDI. And this is, once again, we're going to make this an instrument track. The default, the input, doesn't matter. Now, this is the part that's very interesting. Now, right here, uh, where it says output, we can either output this to a new instrument, or we can output this to an existing instrument. So, as you see here, I don't have an actual, I have battery four, and then I have the iPad, which I created earlier. So... We're going to click on iPad. We're going to make this channel one. Hit OK. So now when I hit my keys, you will notice that there is MIDI data coming in. But now the next thing you need to do, we need to record this as audio. So you need to hit T and create a new track and we're gonna do iPad audio. Now we're gonna make sure that we make this an audio track. It's gonna be a stereo audio track or it could be mono depending on, you know, how you've got your, your iPad set up. Um, for me, my inputs are gonna be inputs three and four because uh, that's the way I have it configured on my um, audio interface. And we're gonna hit okay. So now we're going to monitor this audio. Now, as I press the keys on my keyboard, you're going to see the iPad audio come in. So now let's go ahead and uh, record a MIDI pattern. So from here, now you can adjust that instrument, you can move it around, uh, you can pan it to the left or to the right, whichever, whatever you prefer doing. Uh, the other thing I want to point out to you guys uh, is now when you want to commit to this, we've got this audio track here. So all you got to do now at this point, we just hit record and this will record as audio. And so I will completely delete this MIDI track where the iPad was. And you will now hear nothing but audio from studio from what was coming from the iPad. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, my name is James Jackson with MachineMasters.com. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions at all, make sure you leave them in the comments below, and I'll do everything in my power to make sure I answer them for you guys. Until the next tutorial, peace.